Hey there, Chart Friends, Lamont here from Chart Guys, checking in on the electric vehicle sector and a couple of those battery names. So we have Tesla on the daily time frame trying to confirm this little daily EQ bullish. And we just had an inside bar day today, which, you know, it's, it's not ideal, right? But at least we do have a, a highest close above this prior close. So it's not a bad sign by any means. Market was a bit of a, a, a balanced day today. Not too much activity, so yeah. Wait a second. Yep. Okay. So yeah, market just imbalanced. So you know, not not going to complain too much about an inside bar day on Tesla. Like I said, we're we're still holding above this highest close, which is a good look for bulls, and we're just going to be mindful of the hourly trend uh, to monitor whether or not we can see any more daily bounce follow through on this and the bulls definitely want to see a bit more bounce follow through on this before we pull back to look for another daily higher low okay so failure to come out of this range will be a bit of a red flag and then we'll just be mindful of the potential of more bull breaks with minimal follow through which would then set up a potential wedge okay so checking out that hourly trend and i believe what we were looking out for yesterday was this right so this has begun now like we we didn't know if this was going to be the top and we were going to start correcting so we were wow look at that that's that's funny <laughs> um, um <clears throat> we didn't know what it was going to look like but we were anticipating something similar right a rejection from this hourly resistance here and then pull back to look for an hourly higher low with anything over 838.82 being one so now this is very much in play and we'll ideally look look into the the back test of this area, right? Like if if the bulls could hold over here, this is the daily close, this uh, 88002 level, that, that'd be very strong. But the odds favor a higher low, right? Somewhere back here. And I wouldn't I would not be surprised by any means if we came back to test this 862.23 level, which rejected bears, uh, which the bears rejected from many times, right? Or I, I guess the bears rejected the bulls from many times. Okay. Uh, let me let me kill this uh, box, I guess. Right? You see what I'm saying? Okay. I guess we don't really need this EMA here. All right. So that's pretty much what we're looking out for. And ideally, we'll get those fills looking for that hourly higher low and five minute oversold conditions, which you know is not is not far off. So yeah, I, I guess uh, I wouldn't fault you for being playing it maybe like this, right? So looking for this hourly higher low, back test of those previous highs. Maybe you fill down to, let's see, maybe you use this level here. All right, so front run, okay. And let me just check my fib tool here. Just wanna get an idea. It'd be like a 50 and a golden. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate that, right? So this is like a situation where I think that would, whoops. Where I think that'd be fairly appropriate. All right, so maybe something like that, All right? And of course, we are anticipating higher highs, continuation of higher highs. But, you know, for a play like this, uh, you, it's, it's there's a lot of volatility going on, right? For the rest of the week, we have a bunch of earnings and, and whatnot. So you would want to take profit before we go for that all-time high test right because you just don't know you know it's we've we've gone we've broken it once and then consolidated it, and now we are consolidating under it right there's so you know you don't want to bank on immediate continuation you take a little partial protect your position and then hope for the best on the runner right and you know in this market considering how euphoric it's been if you have been making plays like that it's very likely that you have a, you know a few positions that are running well and seeing maturation okay so we're just looking out for the hourly higher low tomorrow and we're just being mindful of the hourly trend to see if we can see the bulls can see some more daily bounce follow through the key support to hold for bulls will be 838.82 with anything over that being a higher low and the key support for uh, the key resistance i should say to change the hourly trend or rather continue the hourly trend and see more daily bounce follow through is 895.90 okay but really they'll want to take out ideally they'll take out both resistances this 895.90 level and also that 940 level over here okay 
<clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, why the heck is it over here? Base today. Did I not cover Neo yesterday? <laughs> it's weird. Oh no, I, okay, I see what happened. I thought perhaps it would just start pulling back from there. Okay, well, either way, uh, we were looking for the potential of a higher low to print today off of these, this structure here. I don't know where the line is, but I'm confident that this is what we were basing it off of, right? This highest close level and, or perhaps I use this one. I don't know, not sure. Whatever the case may be, we had this zone of interest drawn out. I must have used this one because typically the way I like to do it is I, I, I mark my levels off and then I'll, I'll be a bit, I like to front run them. And, and then on the other side, on the, I, I like to buy below it. Uh, so I'll front run the top one. And then I'll look to buy below the support for the last fill. It might sound crazy, but you know, it, I, I, I'm looking for like a, a fake out fill. You know, I want to be part of the stop hunt and potentially benefit from that. And if not, I'm fine with these, this average prices here. You know, I actually, you know, I don't really anticipate it to get this low. Typically, when I get that third fill, I feel nervous, you know, I don't, <laughs> which is fine, right? You know, sometimes you're going to feel a little uh, uncertain and that's fine. But, I, you know, my point is the, in the ideal situation, I, I just get two fills and then it just starts, the trade starts, starts working for me. That's, that's how I prefer it. Uh, lowest stress. But very often I just get that one fill. You know, if you've seen these videos, you, you can see it, but my style is pretty conservative. Um, and you can, you know, by all means adjust it, right? If you feel like being more uh, aggressive, by all means. Anyway, so um, just make sure you control the risk. So we were looking for these levels here because for, for a potential bottom, just because of these previous, you know, this consolidation structure here, there's all this volume here. And so it's looking like it held, it's held well so far. And so if you're, if you've got this fill off of here, then ideally you've taken some profit because we were testing these lows here, right? And it was also a bit of a high here. So you can just take a little, you know, partial off, pay yourself and then be in a better position management wise. All right. So we're just watching this hourly trend, the daily, did I not start on the daily? The daily chart is, excuse me. The daily chart is just kind of going sideways, right? The bulls have defended this highest close here, 47.88, right? We have the line there, okay? So they're defending this level here and <clears throat> looking like the lower high is potentially, a lower high is potentially being set here under 66.99. But as we zoomed into the hourly trend, the bulls are still playing defense. so. You know, they're positioned well, right? If the market continues to see some strength, then I, I believe Mark, Microsoft is uh, is seeing a lot of strength. And so it was carrying NQ up last I checked. Well, I suppose I, I have charting software in front of me. Um, yes. Okay. So there, you know, markets, as long as markets can remain bullish, then I think NEO is positioned well for some potential continuation. So we're just watching this hourly EQ right now, right? The most important thing that we're watching is the range. So now that we're done with that fill, we're being mindful of the this 56 level here. And then of course, also of the 6458 area. I like to use the closes, but of course, you know, um, the actual resistance, the actual resistance to break for all time highs is uh, 6699, right? Is that all time high? Yes. Okay, so we're just gonna watch, uh, as long as we're in the range, you know, I prefer playing the range, so I really just want more plays ex exactly like this. Now, yeah, I would just bottom fish the range, you know, uh, if you're not in this trade. The thing is now that if the five minute were to get oversold, it would probably have to get a little bit deeper. Actually, not really. You could probably just keep playing those levels again. I'm gonna slow down the zoom. Yeah. You know, as long as you can get five minute oversold conditions, bottom fishing those levels, I, I think is a is a fine play for Neo. But you know, whenever a range bound, just play the range. All right, bottom fishing, top fishing plays are in effect for Neo. Okay, workhorse got the big all time high break today, so this has the potential to see some follow through, right? If we if the bulls can find acceptance over this all time high uh, level of 20, uh, 3088, and you can see in pre-market, we're, we're still holding above it, even though we've pulled back from the highs. And the reason why I'm saying this has the potential for some follow through is because it's a lot of consolidation that has occurred. You know, now, of course, this was a big move off the last daily higher low at 2229. And so whenever we pull back, uh, uh, we will be anticipating a daily higher low. But, you know, because this is such a large structure, there is the potential for of this to carry on. Okay, and this is obviously a large move. 30%. Why didn't my options move more? Hmm. 
Okay. Anyway, so uh, the hourly trend obviously is bullish, although you know it wasn't terribly trendy over here. And uh, this is a good lesson, you know, for for the future, right? When you see this kind of price action structure come into this prior consolidation, right? You can see how there's a, a shelf of volume here, right? And this these levels were uh, there's a lot of market agreement here, right? And so everybody who all the sellers in here that were that thought workhorse should go lower, they were proven wrong. The buyers continued to buy near the lows, and then eventually the imbalance made it so that there was mark up. And then new sellers entered here who thought, no, 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 we we believe that the price should be below 23. And they sold it, sold it, sold it until finally here. And what happens? Buyers showed up, right? So the back test of these prior highs held. And if you notice the structure of the way that we came down, oh my goodness, of the way that we came down, it's a, it's a wedge, sure. But you know what I really want to point out is how choppy it is. Right, this is not a very impulsive move. This is an impulsive move. You string together a bunch of a bunch of candles, right? That that carry for long legs. Whereas over here, these lower lows are getting kind of they're they're not getting a lot of follow through, or they are seeing follow through, but they're leading into very significant bounces. You see what I'm saying? So um, this is a great thing to remember, a structure to remember. This kind of choppy pattern down into a prior resistance level, especially if there's been a lot of agreement there. It's a play that. I've run multiple times, it's very, very high hit rate, okay? Um, so whenever we pull back to look for a, an hourly higher low, we will just look to set one over 2330. Anything over 2330 will be one. I know we've pulled back for some, but it's, you know, it's like we're just in this little flag uh, formation, so I don't really think much of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So a bit of a rounded top on the five minute time frame. So uh, caution, right? Technically, well, and again, we've changed the five minute trend here a bunch of times and it didn't really lead to much, but we'll just be mindful of hourly consolidation tomorrow. And if we were to pull back significantly, I would definitely be mindful of, let's see, actually, maybe there are some daily tops that we can play. All right, so there are. So let me kill some of this stuff that we're probably not going to need going forward just so that there's not so much blinding things to look at. Uh, keep that for now. Probably don't need this or this. Okay, and this for now we are going to abandon because we've, we've broken above it, right? So the this the shelf that we had here, as long as this was resistance, you know, we were we were interested in it. You know what? Let me hide it. And should it should should we fall back below it, then we'll, we'll bring it back out. But for now, what we care about is these levels, right? And the reason for that is simple. They are, again, lines in the sand, right? They are lines in the sand where bears previously showed up to send price, you know, falling, tumbling. And so if we pull back to look for a, an hourly higher low, we can get five minute oversold conditions into any of these lines. In my opinion, these are good places to start playing bounces. You know, you can be bottom fishing off of each one of these levels. As long as the five minute is oversold, there are there bounce plays to be had. And so you probably just want to take a chop and stop approach, right? So if you, if you buy down here and price comes down, you probably want to chop up some profit here. Why? Because there's some resistance here. You see what I'm saying? And just in case it doesn't just higher low and higher high out of here, in case it comes down lower, you'll be prepared again for another five minute oversold bounce down here. And if you do happen to play that bounce and you do see some bounce, where are you going to take some profit? Probably here, okay? Or here. Right? If it were able to get up here, right? So these lows here and this high here, right? So two levels potentially if you look for a bounce play here and you sell half because if you get down lower and the five minute gets oversold again, we're fine. You can play it here and if, where you can take profit here, right? And then if it breaks down lower again, maybe you're done with this, right? Maybe, 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 maybe step away from this trade because ideally these levels would have held for that hourly higher low, right? The, the back test of those really meaningful pivots. If three of these five minute oversold bounces and these big meaningful pivots that are rejected big time on the daily don't hold, then, you know, that's, that's a bit questionable, right? You'll maybe want to zoom out and reconsider this trade, okay? Um, and, you know, I don't think it's a coincidence, right? Look how, <laughs> look how active it is, these levels, right? Look, you can't pretty much just ping pong around them and so i wouldn't be surprised if we came down and tested them each right but ideally you know this first one sticks right here and then you just see more upside right and that can happen on any of these plays but we want to be prepared at each of these levels because we don't know what's going to happen right we, we just know what we should do depending on what, what could happen okay
All right, XP EV, also an inside bar today. Bulls are defending over this base. We are technically just looking for another daily higher low, over 46.66. That's the way that I'm choosing to perceive this anyway. And this one is up here, just you know, a reminder that we are looking for a potential weekly lower high. And it could be being set right now. So I know yesterday we were being mindful of the hourly trend. The, the bulls had pulled back quite a bit from the highs. And so we did set a lower high. However, it's looking like we may just tighten up in a range. Although this, you know, it's starting to look potentially like a diamond, like a reversal formation. So this box is set up down here because if we get hourly extension into, you know, this uh, shelf of support here, there's a trend line and a, a major low that's above. Okay. So we have trend lines to work with from, from these lows here, these two lows here, right, in this area. We also have this shelf here where multiple tops got put in, okay? And so I don't, why, why is there why is there a yellow, a white bar over green? I'll pick one, I'll just go with the green. And so you see the confluence that I'm, I'm looking out for, right? And I, I just don't think, I don't think that given the current, the current sector of, uh, environment and then also the overall market environment that I don't know I just have a hard time seeing it crash through it would need a lot of sustained volume for sure to crash down to this now that being said let's see it's a perfect like little front run I mean I don't love XP EV honestly as as far as my wife does <laughs> as long as far as uh, EV plays go but um but yeah, I, I still think this is a very reasonable place to be looking for this uh, potential hold, right? Because we're looking for the price to potentially just stair step up now, right? If the bears got nothing going here and they were unable to get back down, then see lower lows, then, you know, we're anticipating the potential of continuation, right? As long as this trend is healthy. So just as on this hourly EQ, if the bulls can show up tomorrow and defend this low of 52.87 and break the higher highs over 56.38, they'll confirm an hourly trend change, but they'll really want to take out the, this high, you know, ideally, very quickly, right? So we can be mindful of this uh, shorter term trend line too, I suppose. I'm, I'm hesitant to, to draw it upon this low. Okay, well, I didn't intend for that. But I'm, as I was saying, I did, I'm hesitant to draw it upon this low just because it's not really confirmed, right? The price isn't pulled away from it yet. But going off of these two pivots, you know, potentially we can be mindful of uh, this trend line maybe holding. It would be very bullish though. All right, so just eyes on those hourly supports for XP EV going into tomorrow. Okay, plug, seeing some continuation. Let's start with the daily time frame. Big, strong green bar closing at the high of the day. Although we did close under the all-time high, it's you know it's still a very strong close. Last daily higher low was at 58.73. There's no sign of the bears yet, so we're not going to be mindful of looking for a daily higher low just quite yet. And we are pulling back to look for an hourly higher low with anything over 63.71 being one. And so, you know, if we were to mark off our levels again, I would be definitely interested in that. And hmm, not sure what this. Oh, I know, that's from way back when, isn't it? Yes, that's from way over there. Okay. All right, so definitely not a coincidence, right, that these two levels are stacked. So I'll just leave one, that long one, that macro one. And I would not be surprised if we potentially were to break it a bit. So ideally, we'll come back and backtest these levels in five-minute oversold conditions, looking for that hourly higher low. That would be ideal. Let's check it out. Yes, that, that, that's, a, that's a nice nice little trade. Maybe I'll look to get back to size, potentially. On this trade, no pen, never a pen. All right. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, we ideally will be we'll, the bears will see some more uh, follow through on this five minute downtrend. Although actually, technically, it's a it's a it's an uptrend now. But we'll see if they can take back the trend and have bulls scouting a little bit lower to look for that daily higher. I mean that hourly higher low. All right. Let's see. That's pretty much it. All right, so Z-A-I-R, Zayer. All righty, let's see, well, do I wanna, yeah, I guess so. All right, so this is potentially a daily bull flag now, right? You know, ideally we would have pulled back a little bit more and, and had some extension at our back. I, you know, if, 
that's in my opinion that's really all you need to to make a trading career is like playing off a of price action and extension so for example here this was definitely hourly oversold i know that because it's three well i mean i don't know that but i'm fairly certain of that because it's 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 a bit of a waterfall down to a prior resistance that is now potentially acting as support and it did especially on the back test so you know i i really feel like that's all a trader needs honestly to 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 make a career out of this but um you know, you don't always get that, right? And that's fine. So if you want to be aggressive here and, and look for this bull flag play, then really what you're looking to do is like bottom fish these levels here. And you would accept even a little bit of a break, right? Anticipating no follow through because it's a flag, right? So you'd be bottom fishing like this, okay? Uh, that being said, I personally would just wait. I still, I don't care. I know, I, <laughs> I know it's, a, it's a penny stock. You know, it's, it's I, I, I'm not comfortable with it i whenever i'm not comfortable with an asset you know it's new to me then i just want to play it as conservatively as possible right so that's what i would do at least i would just wait for hourly oversold conditions if they don't occur i don't care i'll look in the future for those ideal conditions that i want to trade for this specific asset right this is not an asset that i would look to get aggressive with because again penny stock low volume blah 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 blah, blah. i don't even know what they do this is a year i don't even know what they do i guess they sell zinc i <laughs> I don't know. Um, all right. I think that about covers it. Thanks for tuning in, and I will see you all soon.